Cool. So let's talk briefly about the Zealot, Falchion Crossbow Zealot. Uh, I wanted to say before we get into the details that I played basically every weapon recently I, uh, on this setup. I've run Two-Handed Sword, Axe, uh, Flail. The only thing I haven't really run really lately is Rapier, and that's mostly out of preference. I, I don't love the Rapier, and you can't get up to the one shot on the crit uh, on the headshot against Stormworm, and it's fine if you like it. There's nothing wrong with it. They're all viable. Um, I think the axe and the flail are quite interesting for group play because they give you a lot of bully potential, so you can beat around mass Stormworm and mass elites. But for clutch, pure clutch potential, there's nothing quite like the falchion for the reasons that you saw in the solo, right? There's so much movement available. Plus, with the push stab spam, you can get quite a bit of control. It's got enough armor DPS, not a huge amount. Um, so I think it's like it got the highest clutch potential. But the two-handed sword was great as well. Had two really good runs with sword, two-handed sword without that much practice, and I, I think I get, uh, the skill gap is quite high with it for between me and maximum, right? With two-handed sword. So if you're at all attracted to two-handed sword, I highly encourage you to try two-handed sword zealot. It's very strong. It's very interesting. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Let's talk about the brief changes. Uh, the biggest change with Two-Handed Sword, for those who don't know what happened in 1.2, is the charge attack now hits everything. So let's say there is a mauler. Normally you can't penetrate that at all, but you can cleave right through that mauler and hit the guy next to him too. So that leads to some really interesting gameplay, and Zealot supports it really well with his very high toughness his high get out of jail free cards like he's a very interesting add to it uh, i highly recommend that you try it before you dismiss it give it a couple tries okay what else the crossbow got a major buff on damage to chaos warriors with crit headshots They're, it's pretty insane so as you saw in the run multiple times i was using right click spam right click spamming chaos warriors just on head to try to get basically fish for crit procs you get 10 percent for free on crossbow it's a weird random property of the crossbow that if you right click then left click you get plus 10 percent crit another five percent here on this property another five percent here that's 25 percent total and another five percent here that's 30 percent crit chance that's pretty darn high so the average damage per hit is like 30 something to super armor to the head and it hit stuns them um anywho it's just, uh, it's nice. I tried using conservative. I need to practice more with crossbow. I think that the top level play, you probably can get more value out of conservative, unless you're going to spam into hordes, which I usually don't anyways, especially with falchion because it's so efficient. Um, on an unrelated note, I'd like to see scrounger nerf such that it only returns two MO on a proc as opposed to maximum MO. But you might, in order to do that nicely, they also should change it such that it's a percentage of max MO so it scales nicely for weapons that have higher max MO count, like repeater. Anyways, that's off that filter. That's off it. As I said at the beginning, actually, I guess I didn't say this on this video. I don't know what the breakpoints are. I really don't know what the breakpoints are. I didn't think too much about it. I just went with things that are just no kidding gee whiz obvious. Parry and attack speed make Falchion feel way better. And yet again, attack speed here makes it feel way better. I've got 20% chaos here, plus a few percent somewhere in here. I think you need like 45% or something, or 40% to get to Fnatic one-shot range on body. So I don't think we hit it. So there's a good chance that this is wrong. There's a good chance this is wrong, and there should be crit attack speed or something to that effect. I will go ahead, and in the discussion, I will post a link to a video, or to a build discussion, or to a build, to a build on vermin builds that hopefully is more min-maxed. I'll ask around on the Squirrel Squad and see when it has a little more min-maxed. So again, this build is not min-maxed. I will give you a min-maxed build. I just want to talk to you about the general stuff. So as you saw in the run, and as I've talked many times before, Perry makes the run. Parry means that you can have momentum against multiple elites. What do I mean by momentum? When you don't have momentum, you are getting forced to walk backwards. You can't get hits off. You might even be forced to be in kite. When you have momentum, you get to do uh, aggressive damaging stuff over and over again. Parry lets you keep momentum because if otherwise, if you had to block a hit, you would have to eat a whole hit stun, which is horrible. Parry, it's a little tiny block and you can keep going and it's exceptionally good on Falchion, because Falchion has the fastest block cancel in the game. Look at it. It's 0.1 seconds instead of 0.3 seconds. It feels so different when you get used to it to go to the other weapons. They feel so slow. Um, a little bit of attack speed makes Falchion feel great. 10% is a great number, so there's 5 and 5. What else? 
I like block cost reduction, but stamina might be just fine here. I'm, I'm not sold one way or the other. I'm not going to push it the issue one way or the other for Falchion. Plus health, non-negotiable in that slot. I like the crit here. I think crit's amazing with crossbow, like I talked about earlier. And crit's amazing with Falchion, because you can crit pretty consistently. I got 10% here, and you probably even want another 5%, so there'd be 5. 10 on the talent, 5 here, 15, 10. That'd be 20 base crit chance. That's pretty high, and every time you crit on a Falchion Light attack, you stagger the hell out of an Elite, or you knock a shield over to the ground. Like, it's a really good control tool. Um, so I, I think I'd probably prefer the 5% Chaos here, or the crit here over the Chaos, depending on if there's a little breakpoint. For True Solo, I actually don't like Shrapnel anymore. I just am too lazy to reroll it. I much prefer Grenade Retain. I like the cooldown because with 30% there, 10% there, and a little bit of hit trading, you can get your cooldown up pretty often against hordes, and you can get it back up semi-reliably if you just wasted it on a horde, and you hear an assassin spawn, and you want up another option, you can get up pretty quick. So if you notice during the run, a lot, I was using my ultimate quite often for utility. So what is some of the utility you get out of a nice little dash? One, if you ult towards an assassin and then you block cancel it, there's a little bit of damage that happens in front of you. You can use that to knock an assassin out of the air and then follow him up with this. It's very dangerous on ping, I'd imagine. It seems to be quite consistent on host, but I can't talk about it to the millionth degree because I haven't done it. Um, a dash counts as a dodge. So if you feel really, like if you run out of efficient dodges and you have a pack master that's about to close with you or a leech, you can just ult and you get a, basically a big long dodge and give yourself space. What else can you use it for? If you need to make some space to get off another shot, you can reload during ultimate. So here you go. There you go. Yet another use. Another use is you can use it to drink your potion, to drink a strength potion, to use a hit med kit, to prime a grenade. Like the utility that you can get out of a dash is immense. And I'd say it is the backbone, really, of, of uh, Zealot utility for True Solo, and it's quite useful. So what? how does Zealot fit in a normal team? He's a great frontliner. His anti-special is just fine. He is not going anywhere. He's very tanky, which is great. So And he's got great clutch potential, because you can start a revive and then dash away, and that sort of thing. He's, he's a great anchor for a team. I'd say he's probably even a more consistent take to take with you than, for example, FK, than Foot Knight. Um, I didn't talk about the talents, but let's talk about them now, you because why is he day. so tanky? Heart of Iron is fantastic. Reduces, like, you don't take damage on lethal, and you can heal back up on a horde or a draft or something. This is the key. 50% damage reduction is insane. It is so freaking strong, especially with base 180 HP with 20% hit. It's insane. 360 HP. Plus, every time you heal, you get double the value out of it, right? So if you kill something, you get 2 temp HP. It's worth 4 temp HP compared to a character that doesn't have it. It is insane how tanky this guy is. You saw this. How many stupid things did I do? And the only, re the only thing I would have made me go down, really, is a grabber. Um, what else? Really, there's no choice here. 5% crit's just so good. If there is some amazing brain point you're working towards with a particular weapon, you could talk to me about No Surrender, but Flagellant is just probably the best talent in the game that's only just a talent, except for, of course, the comparable ones. What else? This is just no-brainer to me. There's really no question here. Some people recommend Pleasure from Pain. For true solo environment, you're going to get so much HP off of killing a horde that is useless. And against elites, you're not going to get that many hits in such that it's not worth that much. It's only worth 10. I think the cooldown's worth a lot more. In my opinion, this is not even close. But a lot of people will recommend this. And I'm not, I haven't played Zealot so much, and I don't, I'm, not such a, I'm not such a fool to think that I know everything, especially on a character and a build that I haven't played for 30 hours. I've played it for three hours. Um, and I, Righteous Seal, there's no question. Even with the 20% crit base and a significant amount of attack speed, Righteous Seal just dominates it. Um, at least I'm pretty sure. I didn't verify that was Zealot, but I'm almost positive that's the case. So before I close this out, I'm going to look to chat because I thought I saw Kempi here, who plays a hell of a lot of Zealot for group play. So what I thought I would do right now is, Kempi, if you want, can I call you real quick on Discord? Do you have a minute to just talk about your build? Because I know you play Axe. You play Axe a lot. Axe Zealot, and I know you play Zealot in high-level group play all the time. 
So it'd be nice if you had a minute. If you're doing something else, if it's too late, man, don't worry about it. But I'm going to call you on Discord. It might be bedtime for him. It's kind of late where he is. It's after it's after 10 p.m., after 11 p.m., I think. We might have to get him another time. He's on mobile. Okay, he's switching over. All right, we'll grab him. Call me as soon as you get it, dude. While we're waiting for him. Does anyone else want to share any other thoughts? I can talk a little bit about Two-Handed Sword. Not a whole heck of a lot. I played maybe six games, seven, and two of them went extremely deep. Um, I felt that Swift Slaying made the weapon feel much, much, much better, but not having parry is obviously brutal on a slow weapon. Um, with really nice, efficient uses of your dodge, you can somewhat get away with it. But e I feel like that you probably, with really good use of charge attacks and jousting, can get quite a bit done with parry and bring parry for group play. I'd be interested to hear what people who are using it for group play have been running. Um, if you do bring the crit, if you do bring the swift slang and the five percent attack speed on the weapon and the five percent attack speed on the charm, you get a pretty absurd amount of attack speed almost all of the time which lets you just cleave into hordes like walking into hordes and eh, not quite walking into but just quickly laying down hordes is very easy with two-handed sword so it's quite strong at that um, and if you get a crit proc off with the 20 percent especially if you get a little bit more from the ult from the ultimate for a little bit you can get a couple quick charge attacks in into a group of elites or something get a little bit of stagger in there if you get one crit in there you get a ton of stagger in there and that's one of the reasons i really like stacking crit on zealot because every time you get a crit it's just so much control oh here's a call hey buddy hey how's it going let me turn you up a little bit so again let me just repeat what i was saying this is what we want from you camp you ready yeah i got for talk about what you like on zealots and how you perceive its role and how you tend to play it in group play. And I'll, I'll try to bring up builds as you talk about them. Yeah. So I run the one hand that acts pretty much exclusively on Zealot um, with the build that you have at the minute, the uh, pretty much straight down the middle apart from cooldown at the end. Um, the reason I take cooldown is because uh, you get much more value out of it uh, in terms of utility, like you were explaining on stream. And uh, Pleasure from Pain is the only other viable option there, but probably only on high cleave weapons like Falchion, Two Handed Sword, just because with Axe, you don't get the value out of it, really. I'd so, probably argue for cooldown anyway, to be fair, but yeah, go on. To use the same build right here. Saint of Battle, Flagellant, Holy Crusader, Righteous, Frother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there is an argument sometimes to take Flagellant off for No Surrender, if you're feeling confident. We're not taking damage, but whether it helps you with particular breakpoints or not, I'm unsure. I still think Flagellant is best because it enables you to just play super aggressive and just like delete elites and stuff like that, especially one handed axe. So yeah, it's good. Something that we've discussed recently, we were talking about we were talking about the glass cannons. Tankiness yeah. is effective DPS in many situations. Because yeah. tankiness means you can play aggressive. And if you can play aggressive, it means you can afford to risk in mixed momentum, right? So you don't have all the momentum. They can actually get hits back in. You get to keep swinging. Yeah, definitely. So it'd have to be I mean, an insane uh, breakpoint, in my opinion, for no surrender yeah, better than Flagellant. Definitely. Um, thing with, like, Axe as well, it doesn't really have any nice breakpoints. I think it's, like, 30 or 40% for a one-shot body shot, uh, shot on a Fnatic, which is ridiculous to build for, in my opinion. Um, so yeah. So why axe? Um, usually because mobility is always a thing and you get consistent armor DPS. Uh, the problem that axe has is hordes, right? People have problems with low cleave weapons generally. Um, but the more practice you put into it, the more value you get out of it really. As soon as you learn uh, like how to, you know, manage hordes and circle strafe and push intelligently with axe. Um, in terms of just like not just dodging and attacking, like you have to mix pushes into to 
not take damage with axe, I find. Um, but I have are a lot you, of hours on the weapon, so yeah. Are you swift slaying crit attack speed? I am, but uh, there's always an argument for parry, of course. Uh, I ran some true solos yesterday, and I was really missing parry. But in group play, I tend to find swift slaying is good, because attack speed just enables it. I think of any of any character in a career, Zealot is the one where swift slaying is most defensible over parry as a choice. Yeah, I mean, he has all the damage resist in the world anyway, right? So, so it's got tons of survivability. If things go really bad, you have cheat death. And if you, yeah. if you have a bad situation, you don't need to rely on traditional kiting as much to get out of it. There's a really good chance you have your ult up to escape it. Exactly, especially with cooldown. So this is like again goes back to That's tankiness right. can be DPS. Time. What our enemies are doing. All right. Yeah. So continue. How do you play it? Um. Well, generally we we run silly difficulty stuff, so constant hordes and things like that. Um, I don't have nearly as much true solo. Um, so do you want to just talk about group play or group is what most people are interested in. Yeah. Um. Well, because Axe has such high armor DPS, you can really manage elites um, in terms of like taking them out of horde efficiently while your team deals with the rest. Um, because with Zealot, even if you take a couple of pokes from Slave Rats, Fanatics, etc., it doesn't really matter because you're barely going to take any damage and you can deal with the nasty stuff efficiently, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, I always run Crossbow as well, so Special Snipe is very efficient, especially if you have the Armored and Skaven breakpoints. I'm pretty sure you can... Um, you get their one-shot assassin, um, crit gas rat and things like that, which is nice. F finish out the build then. Do you do scrounger? Scrounger, yeah, because you just never run out of ammo. <laughs> Crossbow's ridiculous for that with the higher crit chance. So you probably do scrounger, crit. I think the only other... what do you do the, the last other... one? Infantry or or skaven? Armored skaven scrounger. Oh, you don't even do the crit. Uh, no, I don't think you need it. I, d I used to. I used to run monsters. Um, That's not it. I used to run monsters, crit chance, um, and scrounger. But um, I switched recently from advice from Baz, and uh, it seems to be working for me. So yeah. And what do you run on the charm? Um, infantry attack speed, I think. Okay. In decanter, of course. Axe is terrible. Uh, yeah, Axe is terrible at dealing with sorcerers unless you get three light headshots or a charge headshot on a light. That's one thing that it struggles with. Interestingly. So, talk a little bit about the role that you take on the team. Like, how do you tend to position yourself? Like, if there's a mi multiple priorities you could possibly take, which ones do you tend to take on for yourself? That kind of thing. Mine is always frontline elite DPS, pretty much. Um, because I know I have people that uh, I'm confident can snipe specials, uh, and we always have decent horde clear on the team, so I tend to put myself in harm's way and kill the uh, kill the big stuff. <laughs> so, in terms of nearest competitors career-wise, uh, what jumps out is obviously Slayer and FK. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could ar make arguments for a couple other things, but those tend to play differently. So what are the relative merits in your eyes between the Zealot, the FK, and the Slayer? Um, I would say that Zealot has more mobility more often um, because his, his dash is decent. Uh, a bit of a tip with him, if you're in a bad situation and you jump dash, you'll tend to go through more density than just dashing from standing. Good tip. Um, because obviously it doesn't have the uh, it has collision on like handmaiden dash, so if you jump like towards if you're stuck in a corner for example, and you have loads of density in front of you but it's not too bad at the sides, if you jump and dash out to the left or the right, you'll get a lot further than just trying to dash through the middle. So if you dash through the middle, you end up in there. Grim's gonna yell at me, but I think the mechanic is it is basically max mass that it can that it can cleave essentially. Right. right. So one armor target's gonna stop you in the same way that one armor target would stop an attack. Yeah. Sure. All right, continue. Um, so I think in that sense, it's better than Fortnite for me. Um, in terms of like, Handgun is better than Crossbow too, uh, in terms of like special snipe, but because you're on a base melee class, I still think Crossbow is better because of the reload speed, in my opinion. 
Um, so if you do need to snipe a special, then you could dash out, snipe something quickly, not to worry too much about the reloads and keep DPSing. Um, whereas Fortnite, you can use the charge, but you're still sort of left with density around you, even though it's on the floor. Um, yeah. Um, Slayer is probably, as you said, biggest competitor, because obviously he has great mobility, the same talent in uh, Oblivious to Pain, and Flagellant is the same thing. Um, and dual axes, which are and much, arguably one of the best melee Much higher elite right damage, let's be honest. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Nah. But you balance that out with, I guess, having a very reliable, like, good ammo sustain special snipe weapon as well. As well as having elite DPS with axe. I would, um, I would hazard to say that of the three, I think preference is significant. I do yeah. think FK lags a little bit behind the other two. I and think so too. And the biggest impediment to his success right now, it's in my in my eyes, is when you hit F, you're not guaranteed that F's getting off, and it's slow. Oh, yeah. It's like a it's Reinhardt horrible. charge, you know? Yeah. You, you have to almost anticipate the charge, yeah. and it really impedes his ability to clutch. Plus, yeah. whatever weapon you're going to use with him, you're going to want an anti-elite weapon. And all of his anti-elite choices, I mean, have something that makes, keeps them... Like, one-handed mace, it's a fine weapon. It's very solid. It's yeah. not top-tier elite DPS, right? Not at all. I, the other, if I play Fortnite now, I usually play one-handed mace as well, so I know what you mean. But you bring it for the clutch ability, right? Because if you yeah. give up the one-hander, you give up a lot of your clutch ability. So I yeah. feel like right now, FK has to choose between clutch ability and actually being good of his role of frontline elite DPS. Yeah. And, um, he also has less survivability, surprisingly. Less tank ability. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I either agree. Than the other two. So it feels like he has... His only real reason you'd pick him over the other two is if you were a handgun god. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Or if you still run Halberd these days. <laughs> and even then, Halberd's solid. It's very solid. I think it's, yeah. it's a bit... It underperforms a little bit versus dual axes. Sure. Yeah. But the biggest deal is you will have very little clutch ability. Yeah. And if you can have a tank, that all that toughness translates into a huge asset for a clutch scenario. And FK, just his kit is not quite enough to take advantage of that in most cases. Now, yeah. it is possible with parry and great play to pull off some clutches. But sure. it's, it's not the same level of ease that you would on the other two. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it's all the fact that you can get hit in the startup and it just cancel it completely is not an issue for Zealot or Slayer. So that instantly makes the difference for me in terms of the clutch. Um, Kempi, while I have you here, let me ask if you would, would you send some footage, some uh, Zealot group play footage and I can shove it on the YouTube to go with us? Because as, uh, yeah, as, as much as a true solo emphasizes some of the stuff, it doesn't emphasize all the things about what to make a build the build. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. I'll have a look through some VODs and uh, change something over. That's fine. And if there's any other build you'd like to highlight in the same kind of way, I'm, I'd love to have you come on and do it again. So. Yeah, sure. Guys, could you post uh, a link to Kempi's Twitch chat, or Twitch in the chat? And for YouTube, when you hear this, you will find a link to Kempi's stream below. De really high level player. He's over on the Squirrel Squad. He likes to play with Loxel and. Baz, and who else? Who's your fourth usually been lately? Uh, Evolve, Siren as well. Evolve, of course. Yeah. So, very high level EU play, and what's really nice about watching them is their comms are good, and their coordination hurry, is good. They, at this, I, I would say that they're the most coordinated team out there right now, because they've been playing together pretty consistently since, like, since probably late beta. Yeah. And it really shows in the way they play. It's a little idiosyncratic that their builds are a little idiosyncratic, but if you go watch them stream, you'll get a much better sense of party composition outside of like a pub meta. I think it's a, it's a great stream. Plus, Kempi's just a nice dude. So Thanks, is, that, is that enough of a plug? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Is there a, I'm sure it's a little late for you to start streaming now. Um, yeah, I'm going uh, to eat first and stream later, I think. All right. Well then, everybody, he'll be on later. So if you would like, could somebody post his? Did nobody post it yet? Okay. I'll do it. God. <laughs> Making you do some work. <laughs> Thanks, Gumpy. Thanks, Jay. See you soon. See ya.